You can register for part two of this series by clicking on the link in the description. And uh, after you provide your name and email, you should be able to get access. It's absolutely free to watch uh, part two of this series on demand on the ON24 platform. Uh, what we cover in part two of this series is, you know, controlling container resource consumption with control groups. We also talk about implementing access control for containers with app armor. And then we talk about limiting container system calls and performing vulnerability scanning for Docker containers. And we finally end uh, by taking you through the process of building secure Docker images. So if you want to register for part two of this series, all you need to do is click on the link in the description and you should have access immediately. Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Docker security series. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to secure and harden Docker containers during runtime. Um, so if you want to watch part two of this series, you can check that out uh, by registering in the link in the description. Uh, the, you know, the second part is on demand and free. It's hosted on Linode's on 24 platform, and we've partnered with them to bring you this series. So in regards to what we will be covering in this video, the first thing we'll talk about is how to run containers with unprivileged users or how to set up your containers to be run with unprivileged users so that, you know, you can limit access to privileged users as much as possible. Uh, in regards to limiting access to the root user, we'll talk about how to disable access to the root user directly so that even if a malicious attacker knows the password of the root user within the container, they aren't able to actually switch to the root user and actually have a session. Uh, we'll then move on to preventing privilege escalation and uh, this will primarily cover the, uh, the, the, the process of uh, in essentially uh, ensuring uh, that even if there are SUID binaries in place that you cannot use them you know, to elevate your privileges. So that's also very important. We'll also talk about limiting container capabilities uh, through the kernel and kernel capability modules. Uh, we'll then move on to file system permissions and access uh, and we'll talk about making the container read only so that uh, you know any malicious attacker or any malicious script uh, will not be able to write changes to the container you know so on and so forth and then finally we'll talk about disabling inter-container communication so this video is really not going to have much theory because everything will be covered in uh, in the practical uh, area or the practical section and uh, we will actually sort it into parts uh, so that you can actually go through each part that interests you uh, with that being said let's move on to the practical section Okay, so the first security technique that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the process or the practice of always running or launching containers uh, with an unprivileged user. Now, the reason you would need to do this or, you, you know, it's actually recommended that you do this is to prevent privilege escalation attacks, right? So in order to, to actually uh, run or a particular container from an, a Docker image, as an unprivileged user, you need to control the build process for that particular con uh, for that particular image. So that's another security best practice that you should incorporate, and that is to build your own images. All right, and this gives you uh, the ability to set up the environment based on the parameters you're aware of. So, for example, in my particular case, I can build a simple you know a simple Docker. Uh, image uh, using one of our our docker images that we created it's called the bug bounty toolkit so we'll, we'll just use the docker file here you can see it's based on ubuntu 18.04 and uh, we don't set any particular unprivileged user here. So we are going to be doing that. So, you know, I'll just, um, we can just copy this here. I'll just copy the first few commands because the rest of the commands essentially set up directories and install tools. So what we'll do is we will begin the setup process. So I'll just take you through the process of what you do when you're running a, a standard container or a standard image. So if I list out my Docker images, so I say, you know, if I say Docker images, you can see I have an Ubuntu 18.04 Docker image. Now you would typically run it by saying, you know, Docker run, and then I would, you know, I'd say we want to use a terminal and I want it to be, I, I want to get rid of this container when I exit. And then we specify the image ID, right? So we can specify the image ID and then I can use a shell. So I can say, bin bash hit enter you can see that it logs us in as the root user now this may not this may actually seem like a trivial thing but it actually isn't recommended would you give root access to anyone 
or would you give root access to a person on a server? The answer to that is no, even if it's running services. So you need to take the whole concept of host security into the containers. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now, when it comes down to creating these users, I'll just exit from this particular container. And if I say Docker, we can say Docker PSA, uh, you can see we, we don't have any of these containers running, which is excellent. So as I said, we'll be building our own, we'll just create our own Docker file. So we'll say Vim uh, Docker file, and we'll just hit enter. Of course, this is going to be done locally and we'll just copy this initial configuration here and uh, we'll, I'll just insert and we'll put that in there. Fantastic. So in terms of the environment variables, I can set my own environment variables, right? So I can set up, for example, uh, we can say home and uh, we can set up the name of the user that I want to create, the unprivileged user that I want to create, which is going to be Alexis. And remember, if you do require root privileges, you can actually just specify that under, uh, you can actually just specify that within your Docker file. So, you know, uh, you, you don't need to actually have or you don't need to specify permissions for that user for your Docker file to be built, right? So that's in terms of installation. It's just when you're running the container, which is the important bit here. So to add the user, all we need to do is say run. So we're you know, actually running a command here. And the command we want to do is, or that we want to run is going to be called group add. So we're going to be uh, saying group add, and then we specify the user which in this case is going to be Alexis. And again, you can customize that to whatever you want. So we can say Alexis, and then we're going to say user add, and uh, we're going to specify the group. So uh, user add R and G, and then we specify the group. In this particular case, we're not granting Alexis any, any particular privileges or any pseudo privileges, but we could have done that. I can say, you know, for example, pseudo, and then say Alexis. But in this case, I'll just add it Alexis to his own group. So Alexis, Alexis, and he is a fully unprivileged user. So that means he can't do anything that requires root uh, that requires root privileges. So now that we've done this, um, you can see that immediately below this, we can begin the configuration if, if we actually want to do that. But in our case, we're not going to install any particular piece of software. But, you know, uh, just for instance, or for the sake of this particular video, I can say, you know, run. We can then say, you know, apt install apt install nikto or just any commands over here but we're not going to do that so i'll save this docker file and to build this particular docker file into an image we're going to say docker build and we then specify this current working directory which is where the docker file is being stored and then we specify a tag and we'll just call this um let's just call this particular image test and we hit enter and it's going to begin the build process and uh, you can see it's complete. And now if we list out our Docker images, you can see it's going to say, um, it's, it's actually just going to say test, that's the Docker image that we created. So now when it comes down to running this particular image, um, you can see that we can approach it two ways. We can say Docker run, and I don't need to specify a user, and I just I essentially just launch it, and it'll actually use the root user. Uh, but however, when it comes down to, as I said, running Docker's securely, you want to make sure that you use an unprivileged user. So if you want to use a a, a user that you've created or in in your Docker image, all you need to do is say R. And then we specify, uh, we, all we need to do is say, uh, we specify the user so we can actually use you here. And then we specify the username or the user ID, which can be obtained using the Etsy password file. So uh, the user is going to be Alexis. And then we specify the other run options. So for example, uh, Docker run user Alexis. Um, we can also just say we're running this uh, and we want it to get deleted. And then we specify the image ID right over here. And we'll put that in and then say, you know, bin bash for a um, for a terminal session. And there we are. So we're now logged in as the user Alexis. And remember, even if we have the the root user added and we haven't disabled it, but we actually can do that. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, we can't actually switch to the root user because we didn't set the root password. So if we give this particular image to someone, or, you know, if we give this particular container to someone or we give them access to this container, they can't escalate their privileges to root and they can't do anything that would potentially compromise the container or the services running within the container or the host itself if there are vulnerabilities within the host. So, you know, the user can't install new software. Uh, they can't muck around with the services running inside. They can't compile anything. So you and, and they cannot execute anything that, uh, again, may damage the system. So we can then just hit exit here 
and we can close that out. So uh, again, if I just list out my Docker images, I'm just gonna uh, get rid of this particular Docker image that we created. So we'll just say Docker, uh, Docker RMI. So Docker remove this image and we'll just put in the image ID there. And that's gonna get rid of that particular image. And then of course, as I said, we can uh, modify the Docker file to lock or block access to the root user completely. So for example, yeah, I can say immediately after this, I can say, you know, um, run and i can you know say uh, for example we can echo out a command or we can modify uh, or you know prevent access um, by using the change shell uh, command and then we can change the default shell for the root user and prevent uh, you know uh, we can actually prevent a, a user from logging into the root user account even if they have the particular password so uh, again we can essentially just specify the uh, the terminal for the root user as user has been no login similar to what you do uh, when you are securing uh, when you're securing the root account or uh, disabling the root account on Linux. So again, all we need to do is just provide the the command so we can say change shell. And uh, we say the shell is going to be uh, user uh, user has been no login right and then we specify the the user that we want to specify uh, that, that the user of whom or the user the, the terminal for the user that we actually want to switch and then um, we just need to hit save and then we can build this particular image so we're just going to run the docker build command here there we go and um, it looks like that is done and if we list out the docker images now all we need to do is say uh, we're just going to run the docker command again with the user alexis and we're just going to substitute the uh, the docker id here so that uh, we don't have to type that in all over again so we'll just copy that in there and put that in there and hit enter and now if we you know try and switch to the uh, root user and even if we have the correct password and we you know we had uh, you know for example test it'll actually prevent us from logging in as I said, we haven't set a root user password, but I can actually demonstrate this to you. So for example, if we go back into the Docker file, we can actually say, you know, just before this, or even after this, we can actually just say um, run, we can then say password, and then we, you know, we, we, we can then provide a password for the root user. But again, that's not recommended, but this is a great way of blocking root access. Uh, or providing a, a user who is trying to escalate their privileges with no terminal that they can log into. All right, so that is essentially how to set a, you know, an unauthenticated user and how to block root access for your particular images and containers. So again, it's always recommended that even if you're using a third party uh, Docker, a Docker image, it's recommended that you get the Docker file and then, you know, uh, change or customize the configuration based on the parameters that you feel are necessary or you can secure it as required. That's the great thing about Docker. So we're now going to move on to the next step. All right, so the next security protocol or the security feature or the security practice to bear in mind is, you know, the ability to run uh, Docker containers in privileged mode. And of course, you then have the ability to restrict that. So it's always recommended that you never run a Docker container in privileged mode. And you might be saying, well, what exactly do you mean here? So if I just list out my Docker containers, let me just check, check if I have one. I don't. And of course, we created the image previously. So uh, we're just going to be using that particular image that I created. So what I can do is I can say Docker run, right? And um, I can then say, you know, so the, the, the typical commands I was, I'm likely to use, we want an interactive session and I want to get rid of this container when I exit. And then of course I can say privileged, right? I can actually use that particular, uh, I can use that particular option and this will run this container in privileged mode. You never want to do that unless it's explicitly required. So when it comes down to uh, a new type of vulnerability or a vulnerability that many of you who are security centric and have actually you know performed some penetration testing you'll know of a a, a typical or a a, a very 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 uh, simple concept uh, in regards to set user id binaries and the fact that you can escalate privileges or abuse the set user id binaries to run commands as a as another user so for example if within our particular container if we if we had a set user id binary that allowed us to to actually run a command or run a particular binary with root permissions 
we can actually leverage that, right? So uh, as an attacker, we can leverage that to run, you know, various other commands as root. So if you want to disable this, uh, what you need to specify is the security options. So we can say security, um, security op OPT, which is which stands for options. So again, we say is equal to no new privileges. So very, very simple. So no new privileges. Uh, so that's privileges, and we then specify the Docker image, um, the Docker image ID, right? So I'll just copy this because I don't have my Docker image ID at hand, and I think I actually should have, uh, shouldn't have cleared that. So if we list out my Docker images here, and um, we again just uh, go back to the, I'll just paste in that particular command, and we then specify the Docker image ID here, and uh, you know we just specify we're just going to use bash by default, that is going to give me access. And remember, I can then specify to use the on uh, the, the unprivileged user that I created. So let me just do that as well as an added security feature. And of course, you can automate these, uh, the execution of these particular um, of these particular containers. And uh, so we'll say run. And then of course, we specify the user in this particular case is going to be Alexis, sorry, we actually specified run, but rather just a user. And then we say Alexis, and hit enter, and we're now launched in as the user Alexis. So now if I had a a, um, a set user ID binary here, I would not be able to actually escalate my privileges. And, uh, you know, as it is already, I can't, uh, I can't run anything or do anything uh, that requires root privileges because I did not assign root privileges to this particular user. So that is in essence how to disable or how to work around, uh, you know, privileged and unprivileged containers and how to configure them to run as either privileged or unprivileged. All right, so now let's take a look at a security practice or a feature with, within Docker that allows you to specify uh, kernel level or kernel functionality uh, kernel capability. Uh, and, you know, in the previous section, we talked about, you know, running containers in privileged mode. Uh, when we say uh, privileged mode, what exactly does this mean? Well, when, when we specify the privileged flag, uh, what this means is that this will essentially give that container all Linux kernel capabilities. Now, if you've never heard of what capabilities are in the context of a Linux kernel, let me just introduce you to that right now. So I'll, I'll, I've just opened up the capabilities man page, uh, which explains it really, really well. So again, capabilities, um, you can see for the purpose of performing permission checks, traditional Unix implementations distinguish two categories of processes. Now, when, when it, I, I just want to intercept there, when we talk about uh, modern operating systems and their permission and privilege architecture, you're going to have two modes. You're going to have privileged mode and unprivileged mode. And again, as it says here, in regards to the processes, privileged processes whose effective user IDs is zero, also referred to as super user or root, and unprivileged processes whose effective user ID is non-zero, right? So privileged processes bypass all kernel permission checks, while unprivileged processes are subject to full permission checking based on the processes credentials. So what this means is in the previous uh, section, when we specified the security option that essentially prevented us uh, from upgrading or uh, or actually, uh, yeah, uh, upgrading our credentials, uh, you know, in the event we were trying to abuse a set user ID binary, um, what that means is uh, if we set that up or we set up a um, an unprivileged user and we assign the privileged flag to that to that container at runtime uh, we are essentially just usurping or getting rid of the of the fact that we have specified an unprivileged user because that container will still be able to bypass all the kernel permission checks and will be able to essentially run all the various capabilities that are listed right over here so in terms of the uh, the various capabilities implemented on linux you have the you have them sorted out here and they all they all have a prefix, uh, you know, they all prefixed with CAP or uh, capability. And so, for example, the uh, capability audit control enables or disables kernel auditing. Uh, so you can see you can specify the capabilities that you want. And that's the great thing with Docker. Uh, I can run a container in privileged mode, which gives that container all in kernel capabilities, or I can specify an unprivileged user and then specify what capabilities I want that container to be run with which is fantastic. So we can do this really, really simply by, again, if I'll just say Docker run. And before I do that, let me just list out my images here. 
So we say Docker run, and then I say, uh, I can then specify the capabilities that I want to use. So, uh, you know, I can say capabilities, and that's done by using the CAP option. So capabilities, I can then say add or drop. So for example, what is recommended is that you drop all. So you say drop all, and then you add the ones that you want. So you can say Docker run uh, cap drop all. So capabilities drop all, and then you can say capabilities add, and then we can copy the name of a capability here. Um, and you can we can just search for one that would make sense in this particular case, uh, because they're all very, very powerful, as you can see. So for example, um, let's see if I can find one that makes sense. Uh, so we can use net admin, which allows us to perform various network related operations like interface configuration, administration of IP firewalls, etc, etc. So that seems like a piece of functionality that you might want to assign to your container. So we can say capabilities add and then we say we provide the capability name and then I can specify, you know, the other uh, the, com the other runtime options that I want. And then we can specify the user as Alexis and we then specify the image ID here and we specify the shell finally and you know I can say bin bash hit enter and we now have uh, firstly we have dropped all other kernel capabilities secondly we have specified the, the kernel capability that we wanted to use uh, and of course uh, you know I, I, I really am not going to be demonstrating uh, what we can do with this particular kernel capability but you can use the kernel capabilities list here to specify the functionality that you need uh, even though you want to run the container in an unprivileged mode or with an unprivileged user. So that is the process of using um, or specifying capabilities based on your requirements or based on your container requirements. And as I said, there is never a reason to actually run a container in privileged mode because that's probably one of the biggest, uh, the biggest mistakes you can make when it comes down to running containers. All right, so I'm just going to exit for that con from that container and uh, we can move on to the next step. We're now going to take a look at how to, you know, prevent a container from writing any particular changes to the file system or how to set up a temporary file system. So, you know, this is a, it's a piece of functionality that's very, very important when it comes down to restricting your containers or restricting a service account or, uh, you know, for example, the root account. So what do I mean when I say, you know, restricting access to the file system? Well, what we can do is we can actually specify and say that we want this container to run in read only mode, which means that th that any user on that particular container or any service cannot make any changes or cannot write any files to the file system. Now you might be saying, well, you know, this doesn't make any sense because my container or my image requires me to install particular files or I, re I, I you know, my, my web server will be dynamic, files will be changing. Uh, what do you mean I can't make any changes? Well, again, this is very important uh, in relation or in context with other with other you know file system commands like the temporary file system flag or the temporary file system option which allows you to uh, to actually save something temporarily or to save a file temporarily and you can specify the directories uh, that you want so for example if i wanted to run my um if i wanted to run the docker image that we created in this video and i can say you know docker run and uh, I can then start specifying, for example, read only, right? So you can say read only. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll just run it as as is. So we'll say user is going to be Alexis. And I'll just show you what's going to happen here. We'll say uh, we also want to get rid of the container when we're done. So the RM option or the RM flag really doesn't correspond to the file system, to file system permissions in regards to writing uh, to writing files or to making changes. This is in, in essence for managing containers and the fact that when I'm done with this container or when it's in, in an ex exited state, I want that container to be deleted. So that's just a personal preference because you know I'm demonstrating something here. So then I can copy the image ID here and we can then just use a bash, right? So we can log in. So remember, I'm currently, I can actually go into my uh, root, uh, well, I actually haven't set up the environment variable, but I did I did actually create the, uh, the home directory. So we can say home, uh, do we have that directory created? Um, if I just say cd home, uh, and we have the, we, we actually don't have a directory there, right? So if I say, you know, touch 
uh, test for example you can see it's going to tell me cannot touch test or cannot create the file test this is a read only file system so that means i cannot make changes regardless of what user i am so you might be saying well that's weird what if you're the root user so let's try that out so i'm just going to exit from the container and instead of specifying the user this time i can just specify or i can just leave that out and log in as the root user and i'm logged in as root and i can say touch test and i hit enter and there we go. So it says, hey, you can make any changes to this file system. So this is a great way of, as I said, uh, locking down access around particular users or particular services. Or you may just have a service that, you know, you want to lock down in regards to what files or what directories you can, uh, that particular service or that particular uh, container will be able to make changes in. So for example, if I wanted to use a temporary file system, I can say, um, we can say uh, we'll, we'll still use the root user. I can also combine the read only flag with the uh, the temporary file system. So I can say T, uh, TMPFS, so TMPFS. And uh, of course, sorry, we need to actually just say TMPFS. And then we specify the directory under which we, we can make the temporary file. Uh, we can make the temporary changes, right? So uh, we can specify the OPT directory, for example, and hit enter. And now if I print my working directory, I'm currently in the root. If I, you know, if I say something like, uh, and you know, as the root user, we actually have the permission to do this. If I say something like, um, uh, sorry, touch test and I hit enter, it's going to say, hey, you can't make these changes because this is a read only file system. However, if I go into the OPT directory, which is the temporary file system uh, that we're specified uh, and I say, you know, touch test. And there we go. So we can actually make changes within this directory. So this is a great way of locking uh, or, you know, setting up restricted access, even though you may already have privileged users or you may not want to use a privileged user. So, you know, there, there's tons of ways you can set up security with your Docker containers at large. So that is how to use uh, or how to set up, you know, the file system type to use and how to set up, uh, you know, your temporary file system. All right, so we're now going to take a look at a very, very uh, interesting aspect of um, of container security. Now, if you remember, in the introduction, I you know I briefly outlined the differences in in terms of architecture, uh, you know, uh, from containers and virtual machines, right? And you know, one of the questions you might have if you've used virtual machines before is uh, with a virtual machine setup, I know that I can isolate each virtual machine uh, from one another, or I can I can essentially separate and isolate a virtual machines based on uh, on their functionality, based on their purpose. And the way I can do this is by using various uh, networking modes. Well, your question might be, can we actually do this with Docker? Can we do this with Docker containers? Can I isolate a Docker container? And the answer to that is yes. Now, you know, previously with Docker, you had the ability to, you know, outrightly uh, disable uh, or set inter uh, container communication to false. There was an actual flag for this. And many of you have used Docker for a long time, actually knew about this, but now it's all being handled through a network. So uh, what we can do now is or what we're going to be taking a look at now is how to create our own bridge network and we can then specify the options that we want to modify one of these options is going to be the intercontainer communication all right so firstly what we want to do is let's take a look at the networks that we already have firstly let me just check if i have uh, any containers running no we don't okay so to inspect networks or the networks that come uh, by default is we can just say docker network and ls so that's uh, going to list out all the networks and you can see they are sorted based on the type of network so you have your bridged mode which again allows uh, all all containers that are running on that particular bridged mode uh, to to communicate with each other now by default all containers will use the bridged mode and I can I can actually demonstrate this to you or demonstrate this for you um, so for example if I want to inspect this particular network I can say docker network inspect and I just say bridge right and I hit enter and it's going to give us the subnet right over here which again is 172.17 so let me just keep this here let me just note this down so I can actually prove that to you so that's the subnet so that means we'll have an IP within this particular range now if we take a look at the other options uh, for example uh, enable IPv6 that's disabled uh, that's fine and uh, of course you have the uh, the options here that I'm referring to so we have the 
uh, if I can find it, there we are. So we have COM Docker Network Bridge Enable ICC. ICC is uh, an abbreviation for intercon intercontainer communication. So by default, it's set to true. So we want to change that value to false. Now, the way we can do this is by creating our own network. And I'll show you how to do this in a second. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just create a, a quick little container just to show you that it is using the bridged mode. So we'll say um, Docker container. So we'll just say, sorry, Docker run because we don't have one currently running and uh, we'll just specify you know the test uh, the test image and just say bin and uh, we'll just say bash here okay so we're currently logged in as a root user if i just say you know apt um, apt update and uh, well I, we actually don't need if config uh, ad uh, we just ipas let's just use ipas uh, we don't have ip addr uh, so we just uh, we can just say I, uh, apt update and uh, apt install uh, let's see uh, y and we'll install net tools um, so we'll just install that here and uh, we should be able to get the ip then so uh, so we'll just give that a few seconds here there we are so if config like so you can see it's set to that particular subnet that we had just copied over so you know 17.7 uh, uh, 172.17 so uh, that means that if i create another container we will essentially be able to communicate with that particular container so for example if i just um, you know I, I don't think i can actually demonstrate that but let's actually move on to the process of creating our own network so i can actually demonstrate this so what i'll do is we will just use tmux i think i have tmux here and we'll just say container one container one and we'll create a new session here and i'll just rename this to container two right so container two all right so within container uh within the um sorry within container one uh, which I'm actually active on right now. We'll just create a container similar to what we just did. So we'll say um, Docker run uh, IT and we'll say, you know, uh, we'll just leave it as is and we just, we'll just run the test one. So test and then we will say um, bin bash, right? And uh, we'll, we'll just hit enter. So we have one container running. We'll then open up the second container. So I'll just move to my second section uh, to my second session and say Docker run same thing, uh, the exact same options here. And we'll just say, you know, bin bash and obviously going to have different IPs. So um, what we can do is again, just say sudo apt. Um, we'll just say apt update because we don't have sudo. So apt update and apt install uh why we say net tools and i'll just copy this particular command and run it in the first container as well so we'll just hit enter go back into the first container run that particular command as well and remember all of these containers are running simultaneously so we'll just let this complete and uh, now what we'll do is um just wait for that to complete here and there we are. So if I say IF config, we have the IP here. And let's check the container. We can actually run an nmap scan, but we're gonna we're not gonna be doing that. So IF config. And if I say, you know, if we want to ping this particular address, we can again just copy that. And if we go back to the first container and say, you know, ping uh ping that particular container address. So it's apt install uh ping, because we don't have that. I can't believe that's not there already uh apt install net tools we've already installed net tools here um do we need to do that again do we need to install net tools again we already have net tools um so we should be able to ping um ping is not found so apt search ping how come we can't find the ping package here ip utils ping all right so apt install IP utils and we say ping IP utils ping like so and we can then say ping um, that particular IP here and you can see we can communicate with that particular with that particular container so that's uh, in essence how the bridge um, how the bridge connection works now if we want to disable uh, you know inter inter container communication all we need to do is let me just go back to my uh, to my second container here so i'll just exit and we'll close this particular container in this particular session and i'll just leave this within tmux and we'll just say 
we'll just call it uh, term one okay uh, so we'll exit from this particular container as well and uh, we our job now is to create a new bridge network that prevents inter inter container communication so the way we do this is by saying uh, docker network and then we say create of course and then we provide the 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 driver that we want to use which is going to be bridge so we'll say um, the driver is going to be of type bridge right and uh, we then specify the options that we want to use in this particular case um we need to copy the uh, the additional option i think i'd copied it the option that essentially specifies whether or not we want to enable um we want to enable the inter in the intercontainer communication so i'll just copy that here and uh we should be able to paste it directly so there we are um so we'll just add the the quotation marks so that was the option here and we've set it to false okay which is very important and then we provide the network name so i'll just call it test net all right so we'll just call the network test net and uh, we'll hit enter it's going to create that network so now we say uh, docker network ls and we list out that particular test net you can see we can then say docker network inspect and then we say test net right to just list out the information we've not specified the subnet information or the any of the ip information that's up to you but the option uh, that we're looking for here is uh, you know the uh, docker network uh, bridge uh, enable I icc and we want to set that to false okay so now if we want to run a particular docker image or a container with a particular network configuration um, we all we need to do is just say docker docker run and we just uh, again specify the flags that you like or that you're comfortable with in regards to the configuration and then we say network and that's going to be test net we'll run it with the test network and then we just specify the name of the image which in this case is just going to be called test and we'll just run this with bash here and if i now say you know apt uh, install or apt update let's just run that particular command so apt update and apt install we'll just say if uh, or i think it's net uh, net tools and uh, ip utils ip utils ip utils ping uh, i believe it was and we hit enter and let those packages install all right so we're just gonna accept that and we should be good there so if i now say if config uh, we you know we, we have a different uh, different subnet but uh, the main process or the main thing here is whether or not we have the ability to to communicate with another container and, you know we wanted to disable that if we want to isolate this particular container so i'll create a new terminal session here and we'll just say docker run and we'll, we'll run it on the same network or even we, we don't even need to run it on on the custom network that we created all we're trying to see is whether one uh, is is whether one container uh, can communicate with another and the one that we've isolated we want to make sure it cannot communicate with the other ones so we'll say docker run it and i will just say you know bin bash and the first thing you'll notice of course uh well we actually have to just perform this cumbersome installation every time um so i'll just say apt update apt install y um net tools because we don't need the ping utility right now so net tools I have config so we've got the you can see it's on a totally different network but if we can also do it on the same but if i go back in here and we say ping for example paste in that here you can see it's not going to be able to get a response now now that's on a different network if we put the if we put the second container on the same on, on the same uh, test net network then again uh the, it'll actually be the same thing so we'll just exit from here and we'll then say uh you know docker we'll just say docker run um and we then say you know it rm and we say um, we can then specify the network option which again is network and then we say test network so test net and then we say test and that's the image name and then bin bash hit enter apt update uh, let me just speed up this process apt update apt install y and then we say net tools uh, i actually should have installed these packages within the image itself or within the docker file i should have specified these packages to be installed so that we save time but you know hey ho all right so there we go we'll just say i have config 
and now they're on the same they're on the same subnet so we can just copy that and we can go back to the th first terminal here and say ping and provide that there and hit enter and you can see they can't communicate with each other i can't communicate the other uh, the other container on the same network and they're all isolated so uh, if you want to isolate your containers uh, you can create your network configuration you can specify your ip configuration i'll have all of this documentation listed out within the documentation for this video so you can actually do that for yourself so that is how to enable uh, you know, or to disable inter-container communication, uh, you know, under the guise of isolation, which is, uh, which can be very, very important. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. And this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.